If you think the age of our species is settled, then by the end of this video, you might not be so sure. Because by looking at evidence from genetics, anthropology, and archaeology, it's clear. Homo sapiens could be far older than we think. And if that's true, it means far more is possible than we could ever have imagined. Hi guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Michael. I have a degree in ancient history, and on this channel, we discuss the unexplainable mysteries of our past. Let's get into it. A century ago, many scientists believed our species was young. The first discoveries of early modern human fossils suggested Homo sapiens had been around for only 30,000 years. However, over time, paleoanthropologists kept unearthing older human remains, forcing a continual revision of our timeline. By the late 20th century, fossil finds in East Africa had extended the age of modern humans to nearly 200,000 years. And for decades, this was the prevailing wisdom, that our species arose in a cradle of humankind in East Africa about 200,000 years ago. However, that all changed in 2017 with a stunning discovery in North Africa. At Jebel Irud in Morocco, archaeologists had excavated fossils of at least five individuals back in the 1960s, but their significance wasn't understood at the time. Those remains were initially misidentified as Neanderthals and thought to be only 40,000 years old, fitting the then popular and mistaken idea that modern humans evolved from Neanderthals. But decades later, improved dating methods revealed the Jebel Irud bones are actually about 300,000 years old and are, crucially, Homo sapiens, the oldest known fossils of our kind. This discovery shattered the conventional 200,000 year timeline and implied that by 300,000 years ago, early modern humans were already spread all across Africa. In other words, our species' origin date had suddenly been pushed back by a full 100,000 years an extra third. It was a reminder that the story of human origins is continually being rewritten. So the trend over the last century is clear. Every time we uncover new evidence, the antiquity of Homo sapiens seems to stretch further back in time. However, while fossils tell one story, our genes tell another. Because even as the fossil record was being pushed back to over 300,000 years, genetic evidence began hinting that Homo sapiens might be far, far, far older than even that. A landmark moment came in 2010, when scientists published the first draft of a Neanderthal genome. Comparing Neanderthal DNA to living humans, they concluded that Neanderthals and modern humans shared a common ancestor, roughly 800,000 years ago. In other words, the split between the ancestors of Neanderthals and the ancestors of present-day humans might date back to over three quarters of a million years, much earlier than anyone had imagined based on fossils alone. This genetic clue was intriguing intriguing, but its uncertainty was high. But then, in 2016, an even older genetic data point emerged. Researchers managed to sequence nuclear DNA from the Cima de los Huesos hominins in Spain. This site holds 430,000-year-old fossils that show early Neanderthal-like traits. By painstakingly retrieving ancient DNA from these bones, scientists confirmed the Cima people were an early branch of the Neanderthal line. Crucially, they calculated when the Neanderthal lineage diverged from ours. The result? The population split between archaic humans and modern humans occurred up to 765,000 years ago. Such findings imply that the genetic lineage of Homo sapiens is incredibly ancient, on the order of half a million to nearly a million years old. Now, to be clear, this doesn't necessarily mean that anatomically modern humans roamed the Earth 700,000 years ago, but it does suggest that by that time, there was a distinct population, our evolutionary branch that would eventually lead to modern humans. So, genetic data has essentially outpaced the fossil record and firmly points to a deeper timeline for our species' origins than fossils alone reveal. But it's not just genetics pointing this way. A 2019 study in Science Advances looked at the teeth of the same fossils. Teeth evolve fairly steadily over time, so they're like a built-in evolutionary clock. But here's the surprise. These 430,000-year-old teeth already looked very Neanderthal-like. That means the Neanderthal lineage must have been diverging long before 430,000 years ago. In fact, the researchers concluded that the splits between modern humans and Neanderthals must have occurred at least 
800,000 years ago. Otherwise, the Neanderthal teeth would have had to evolve at an unrealistically rapid pace. This means, to put it simply, that our lineage, the branch leading to Homo sapiens, may stretch back close to a million years. So, if the Homo sapiens lineage could really stretch back almost one million years, one might ask, why don't we find Homo sapien fossils that are that old? Well, part of the answer lies in how we classify ancient bones. Paleoanthropologists have long wrestled with what to call fossils that are intermediate between clearly archaic humans, like Homo erectus, and clearly modern humans. Traditionally, many fossils from the Middle Pleistocene were lumped under broad labels like Archaic Homo sapiens. These hominins had brains approaching the size of modern humans, and some advanced traits, yet their skulls retained older features, like thick brow ridges, that set them apart from us. Thus, in the late 20th century, it became fashionable to assign many of these fossils to separate species. For example, Homo hadelbergensis. Essentially, the category Archaic Homo sapiens was replaced to avoid calling these ancestors sapiens too early. But this is largely a game of nomenclature. Whether we call a 400,000-year-old skull Homo hadelbergensis or Archaic Homo sapiens, we're referring to a creature that is part of our evolutionary story. In fact, many researchers view African fossils in that age range as the direct ancestors of modern humans. For example, a skull from Bodo, Ethiopia, which is 640,000 years old, shows a mosaic of features. It's often classified as Homo hadelbergensis, but it could just as well be seen as an early member of Homo sapiens. The key point is that if a bone older than 300,000 years is found, anthropologists do not call it Homo sapiens, not because of a magic biological boundary, but because convention has decided our species didn't exist yet. Now think about this. If a partial skeleton, say a thigh bone, is found from 600,000 years ago, we can't really tell from just that thigh bone what human species it was. But because we assume that Homo sapiens don't go back that far, we automatically assign it to Homo erectus or something. But what if that assumption is wrong? What if our lineage stretches back further than 300,000 years? With fragmentary fossils, there is a huge margin for error. We must be careful about our assumptions. It's possible that some fossils currently labelled as other species are actually early Homo sapiens. There's also the matter of interpretation. Paleoanthropologists must decide which features define modern humans. Fossils often present a mix. For instance, Homo antecessor from Spain from 780,000 years ago was initially hailed as a potential common ancestor of both modern humans and Neanderthals. Its face is remarkably similar to that of modern humans, despite its age. Some argue it's our direct ancestor, while others argue it's a dead-end offshoot of Homo erectus. Either way, it demonstrates that very ancient humans could exhibit surprisingly modern-like traits. And if traits such as modern facial anatomy showed up 800,000 years ago, it's conceivable that other hallmarks of Homo sapiens, like bigger brains or advanced tool use, were present hundreds of thousands of years ago as well. In short, the absence of a clear Homo sapiens label on very old human fossils doesn't mean our ancestors weren't around. It may simply reflect how we categorize fossils. Our lineage didn't pop into existence overnight. It evolved gradually from older humans, so the challenge is recognizing at what point in that continuum we actually emerged. Another important point is the fragmentary and spotty nature of the fossil record. Human fossils are rare to begin with, and the further back in time you go, the rarer they become. In Africa, the apparent cradle of modern humanity, hominin fossils between about 900 and 600,000 years ago are extremely scarce, verging on almost absent. Paleoanthropologists openly acknowledge this empty period in the African record, and this gap overlaps with the time frame geneticists suspect our lineage was evolving. It's a frustrating truth. The places and periods where we most expect to find the earliest Homo sapiens often yield no fossils at all. Erosion, geology, and the limited number of excavation sites leave us with a big unknown. And compounding the issue, conditions in much of Africa are not ideal for preserving very ancient bones. Unlike the cool caves of Europe or the permafrost of Siberia, where Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA was recovered, African environments tend to be warmer, wetter, and more biologically active, which means organic remains degrade faster. We currently have no ancient DNA from Africa anywhere near the Middle Pleistocene period. 
Without genetic data or abundant fossils, scientists must piece together our origin from scant clues. But absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. The lack of abundant Homo sapien fossils from older than 300,000 years ago could simply mean we haven't found them yet, or they were misassigned, or they just disintegrated into the Earth a long time ago. Scientists also recognise that population dynamics can leave huge shadows in the record. A recent genomic study suggested that around 800 to 900,000 years ago, our ancestral population crashed to perhaps only 1,200 breeding individuals, a severe bottleneck that lasted for millennia. During such a bottleneck, our ancestors could have been so few in number and geographically restricted that a tiny isolated population in Africa would be extraordinarily unlikely to leave fossils we can find today. This highlights how thin the record could be. Our lineage might have been hanging by a thread, leaving minimal traces. We thus have a very incomplete picture of human evolution in the critical 500 to 800,000 years ago period. Every new discovery has the potential to extend the known range of Homo sapiens. As one researcher from the University of Cambridge said, we can only date humanity based on the fossils that we have, so it's impossible to say that this is the definitive age of our species. The study of human evolution is always in motion. Nowhere is that more true than in pinning down when and where our species truly began. So, with all the evidence, we must consider a provocative thought. What if our species is much older than we think? Current academia confidently asserts that our species is no older than 300,000 years. But what if future findings show that Homo sapiens are actually 600,000 or 700,000 or 800,000 years old? But let's pause for a moment and really think about what this means. How might our view be different if our species has truly been around for 800 or even 900,000 years? That would mean beings with brains like ours, capable of language, imagination and culture, have been walking this planet for nearly a million years. The implications are staggering. Erosion, climate and time are merciless. The vast majority of what once existed has simply vanished. And when you consider what humans have achieved in just the last 5,000 years, from the birth of civilization to space travel, all within a blink of evolutionary time, it forces you to wonder what might have been achieved in that enormous, unrecorded stretch of the deep past. Could there have been bursts of culture, technology, even civilizations that rose and fell, only to be erased by nature and time? This is where scale matters. 800,000 years is almost beyond comprehension, and yet we often speak with such confidence about the timeline of humanity, as if we know the whole story. In truth, we do not know how old our species really is. What we do know is that Homo sapiens have been here for at least 300,000 years. That's established fact, but if the true figure is two or three times that, then the number of possible paths that our species might have taken multiplies dramatically. Now to be clear, there is no evidence that humans were building great cities or mastering technologies hundreds of thousands of years ago, but it is a possibility and a possibility that is worth considering. Because here's the paradox, mainstream science tells us humanity didn't really innovate until the Neolithic Revolution, around 12,000 years ago, when farming villages and complex societies suddenly appear. But that span of time is so minuscule compared to how long we may have been around, and we know how quickly our species can leap forward once the right conditions exist. So why should we assume it's never happened before? And that's really the point. If modern humans really are far older than we think, then the story of our species may be far richer, stranger and more fragile than the tidy version we've been told. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a comment or a like below or subscribing to my channel. See you next time.